final campaigning in Taiwan is in full swing for tomorrow's presidential election. Mass rallies are being held ahead of tomorrow's poll, and around 19 million eligible voters are set to choose between two leaders with very different visions for Taiwan's future. Incumbent President Chai Ing-wen of the pro-independence Democratic Progressive Party is taking on Han Kuo-yu of the pro-Beijing Kuomintang. Some polls suggest Mr. Han is trailing President Tsai by 30 percentage points. Voters will also choose a new legislature with analysts expecting the DPP to retain its majority. And we have correspondence with both candidates tonight. It's first to Victoria Jen in Taipei. So, Vic, you know, the election has been centered around China and um, Hong Kong, but there's really very scant mention of policies. Are voters really concerned about that? Yes, certainly. It has been a major problem throughout this entire presidential campaign. There is little mention of any substantial policies from both camps. Now, President Tsai Ing-wen has focused her campaign on attacking Han Kuo-yu. She accuses him of lacking political experience to be a leader and his empty promises to the Kaohsiung city residents. And Han Kuo-yu also targets his attack on Tsai Ing-wen, uh, like her failure to secure Taiwan's diplomatic diplomatic allies and also her controversial economic policies that are making the people's lives miserable. So the vote has come down to who you like better or dislike the least and also a choice between the pro-independence and unification forces. Glenda? Well, Victoria, this election, Ms. Tsai is also facing insults, it seems, based on her gender, including the fact that she doesn't have children and is not married. It seems like if that's those, the arguments being leveled against her, then it doesn't sound like a very strong case. Yes, it actually helped her um, in many ways in gaining more support and sympathy from female and young voters. Now, remember, Taiwan is considered the most vibrant democracy in Asia, and it's also the first in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. So the public mood in general does actually not approve of such sexist remarks from the KMT officials. In fact, they have repulsed many young voters whom the KMT has been trying hard to win over. So the KMT has actually shot itself in the foot. And that's also why you see a lot of more young Taiwanese turn up at Tide's rally behind me. Now, polls show that more than 70% of young voters under the age of 30 support Tsai Ing-wen, and their votes are crucial to who will win the vote Saturday. Steve? So, Vic, are there any concerns, um, security concerns, and what is um, the security measure like on the ground where you are? Well, yes, police authorities are definitely on high alert, and they have deployed 60, uh, 65,000 police officers at polling stations across the island on the polling day. And since November, police authorities have also deployed 330 police officers to protect the safety of all the presidential candidates. And that's because there have been a shooting incident back in 2004 in which DPP presidential candidate Chen, uh, Chen Shui-bian was shot and sustained minor injury. And it was that particular incident that had helped him to win his second term by a slim margin. So they're making sure that the security is at its highest level to prevent such incident from happening again. All right, thanks for that. Victoria Jen speaking to us from Taipei at the DPP Stronghold Rally. And now over to Kaohsiung, where Lynette Lim is standing by. So Lynette, President Tsai's opponent, Han Kuo-yu, he spent the day campaigning in Kaohsiung. Tell us more about his campaign. That's right. After a massive rally yesterday in Taipei, he's back on home ground in Kaohsiung, where he was largely... Uh, driving around in an open-top vehicle, waving to his supporters, as well as repeating his slogan, Taiwan Anquan, Ren Min You Tian. And that roughly translates into Taiwan's security will bring about wealth for its people. That's really the basis of his platform, which is closer ties to China, 
uh, stability in cross strait relations that will enable Taiwan to continue doing business with China and continue to benefit from China's rise. That also, as we heard from Victoria earlier, is the main crux of uh, it's a top voter priority issue as it has been uh, for nearly every election. But this time, it does seem to be uh, looming even larger in the background. Yeah, and then Mr. Han is behind President, President Tsai by 30 percentage points, according to some polls. Uh, Kaohsiung has traditionally been uh, his stronghold. We can see a lot of people have turned up for him tonight. Uh, has that changed? The turnout is really strong as expected. Uh, organizers earlier estimated there were more than 10,000 people. But I've been here for the last two hours and I'm hard pressed to find anyone below the age of 40. So that really says a lot about how uh, politically divided Taiwan is along generational lines. Mr. Han's uh, closeness to China, his uh, advocacy of uh, closer ties also pushed many young people away. His, pol his polling numbers started dropping also around the same time in June when the Hong Kong protests really intensified. Uh, people began to see it as uh, the, the race as being framed as one that is a choice between uh, closer ties to China and absorption by China for economic gains or uh, a, a, a vote for independence and democratic values. And this really damaged uh, Mr. Han's standing among younger voters, many of whom have turned away from him. But apart from geopolitical factors, the fact that he uh, so early into his term as Kaohsiung mayor decided to run for the president's office also made many voters disappointed. Uh, and the fact that uh, he also had a series of gaffes, including miso misogynistic and sexist racist remarks, that also did not go down some well with voters who felt that he was not a presidential candidate, not presidential enough to be uh, a, a leader of Taiwan. So, Lynette, you're there right now. What is the mood like? Do you think people are confident that he can actually pull it off? People are confident, but they're also quite circumspect because they've seen the polling numbers. You know, like you said, he's trailing this tie by some 30 percentage points. Uh, but they're also very positive because uh, he's brought a lot of energy to the Kuomintang party. He's brought a lot of new ideas in and many people that were previously marginalized. Uh, Mr. Han is seen as an outsider to the party. He's not among the party elite. And he speaks the language of the common people. That has really invigorated many people within the party who were previously apathetic, not turning out to vote. Uh, so so there's a chance that, you know, those above 40, uh, if the turnout is good enough, could turn the tide just as he did when he won over the Kaohsiung mayor in 2018. So there's a small chance in there. But then again, at this rally, we're seeing mainly all Kuomintang or KMT supporters. There are many people back home. This is just a small fraction of the 2.3 million Kaohsiung population and the 12 million uh, and the 19 million, I beg your pardon, voter population in the whole of Taiwan. So it's, it's really not very representative to tell from this rally. But we also do know that uh, in the case that he does not succeed, he will remain a political force in future. All right, thanks for that. Lynette Lim speaking to us from Kaohsiung, where it is the stronghold of uh, opposition Han Guoyi, who's holding his last day of rally before Taiwanese goes to the poll tomorrow.